George Carlin was many things. A trendsetter, a trailblazer, a two-toed undulate that's quite tasty with a bit of rosemary and thyme. To some, he's a modern philosopher, and to others, he's just a really grumpy old man with too much time to think and too few people to talk to. So yeah, pretty much a philosopher. Point is, Carlin was a lot of things, but one thing he certainly wasn't was conservative. Socially, politically, linguistically, nothing about this man even comes remotely close to Greg Gutfeld. Except their shared propensity to make conservatives look like clowns, that is. I mean, literally all you have to do is Google the words Carlin quotes on Republicans to see just how much he absolutely loathed not just them, but what they believe. Like seriously, I haven't seen so much contempt from one person toward a group of since Kevin Samuels died. And if it's too soon, I do not care. But unlike all the unwed and corn fed single mothers keeping red table talks relevant and still holding out hope that that thousand dollar seed of theirs will eventually manifest into an Idris Elba clone of their very own. Conservatives somehow got the idea that Carlin was actually one of them. And as much as he'd hate me saying this, George is probably having a field day with this in the great comedy seller in the sky because, you know, he's an atheist. Never mind. Based on personal politics alone, Carlin was pretty much a Marxist in all but name. I mean, the guy's worldview is pretty much just Das Capital for comics. Don't believe me? Because that's all you ever hear about in this country is our differences. That's all the media and the politicians are ever talking about, the things that separate us, things that make us different from one another. That's the way the ruling class operates in any society. They try to divide the rest of the people. They keep the lower and the middle classes fighting with each other so that they, the rich, can run off with all the fucking money. <laughs> Fairly simple thing happens to work. You know, anything different, that's what they're going to talk about. Race, religion, ethnic and national background, jobs, income, education, social status, sexuality, anything you can do, keep us fighting with each other so that they can keep going to the bank. You know how I describe the economic and social classes in this country? The upper class keeps all of the money, pays none of the taxes. The middle class pays all of the taxes, does all of the work. The poor are there just to scare the shit out of the middle class. <laughs> Keep them showing up at those jobs. Yeah, that's basically every Jacobin article ever written in a nutshell. Now, while y'all know that I've said multiple times that I think the whole historical materialism argument is a bit reductive for obvious reasons, I've never said that it was without merit. My argument has and always will be that, yes, concepts like race were constructed to create divisions that didn't exist or need to, for that matter. But that those concepts and more importantly, their consequences are so ingrained in our society that they must be addressed in themselves and not as mere symptoms of a bigger problem, even though they are, if we're ever to achieve a truly equitable society. In other words, consider reparations to be my leftist litmus test. And a lot of y'all have failed. I'm sure there's still a space for you at CPAC, though. That being said, I feel like I've said enough in the past that y'all should know that I agree with a lot that Marx and Marxists believe. I said a lot, not all. Point being, I'm not going to dwell on breaking down every single instance of Carlin crapping on conservatives because, again, Google is a thing. Matter of fact, since you're on YouTube, why not just look up a video? Forced pregnancy, the American dream, God himself. Carlin went out of his way to clown pretty much everything that conservatives consider sacred, including white people. So I'm not going to waste time reposting a bunch of Carlin bits, even though the click to effort ratio was tempting. Rather, I want to try to understand how and why George Amadeus Carlin, of all people, the OG counterculture comedian. Well, what about Lenny Bruce? Shut up, Clarence. Like I said, the OG counterculture comedian became a conservative icon. Well, I think first we have to try to understand what constitutes comedy for modern conservatives. I have, and for the record, a ton of other people have talked about this in the past, but conservative comedy is pretty much just masturbation with more steps. Very unsexy steps. 
Think of a popular conservative comic. Gutfeld, Crowder, and honestly, that's all I've got because I really haven't heard a conservative comic worth a chuckle since. Actually, now that I think about it, I really can't recall a conservative comedy bit that I actually laughed at. And no, satire doesn't count. I'm not saying there aren't genuinely funny conservative comics, but what I am saying is they don't base their act on their politics. So again, that doesn't count. Like I've said in the past, the closest thing I can think of is South Park or King of the Hill. But even those shows spent just as much, if not more time, making fun of conservatives as they do liberals. I mean, if y'all have stuck around this channel long enough, you've noticed that I spare no one from Fourth Reich Republicans to socially stunted subreddit Stanlinists and everyone in between. But it should be more obvious than the ruling in Future's next family court hearing that I'm pretty far left of the smiley face fascism that Trumpites advocate for. To get an idea of conservative comedy in a nutshell, just listen to this objectively cringe-worthy Crowder bit. Of course, I grew up in a high school which was largely uh, Middle Eastern, so you get these Middle Eastern wannabe thugs. <laughs> You're nice people, but you can't pull off the thug look. Like, oh, 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 you know what? I am going to mess you up hardcore. Check out the German white boy. I want my nut on the left side. Yes, that's the crib side. <laughs> They're cruising down the street for chicks like. That's going to get a comment at Media Matters. <laughs> Like I said before, the joke is absolute garbage, including the fact that he obviously doesn't know the difference between a posh tune and a poon jab. But then again, something also tells me that the only Crips Crowder's ever seen were in a nursing home. Again, not offensive, my best friend has CP. But if you didn't catch the bit, the joke isn't really about Lebanese lokes prowling the streets in search of Pakistani pyrus, the Merc, which, in the hands of a half-decent comic could actually be a half-decent bit. But it's about how triggered all the blue-haired feminazis and the lily-livered lip tars will get over him even making the joke in the first place. Don't believe me? Look at any one of Steve's videos. Matter of fact, save yourself the brain cells and just read the titles. That's basically the only hook he has. It's just one big inside joke that's not even that funny to begin with. And I mean, okay... If you want to rely on the convergence of your and your audience's prejudices as a crutch, then by all means, go ahead and do that. That's pretty much been the family guy formula since like season four and pretty much every late night talk show host not named Conan, Noah, Oliver or Myers or even SNL post Trump again. Or you see a pattern here, right? I mean, except for me repeating almost exactly the same points I did in the Crowder video. This isn't just a conservative problem, people. It's a comedy problem. Nobody knows how to tell a joke to save their life these days because that's not what people want to hear. They want to hear someone jerk their egos off for being so much smarter than those doofies on the other side of the sociopolitical spectrum. That's why their material doesn't translate to someone who doesn't think or believe exactly the way they do. So again, it's just mutual masturbation with more steps, or as it's popularly called, clapter comedy. Listen, I'm not saying that I'm anywhere near Carlin. That's what I have y'all for. But what I am saying is my priority with these videos is always to entertain and inform. I don't need you to agree with me to make you laugh. Matter of fact, more than a few times now, I've had people who I couldn't disagree with more politically say just that. And you know why? Because I actually know how to tell an effing joke. That's why. That's what separates Carlin and my personal goat, Dick Gregory, from our modern day clapter commentators. I told y'all before that Chappelle is my favorite comic. But that being said, I can't help but be disappointed with some of his newer specials. The closer in particular, because let's keep it a buck. A lot of it was just plain lazy, at least compared to what we know Dave is capable of. And I'm not going to sit here and cap like I didn't laugh because I did and I still do. But 
I'm not on the floor grasping for my inhaler like I did when watching some of his older bits. And honestly, the same goes for Carlin. It's not that his later work wasn't funny, but that in my opinion at least, making people laugh wasn't his priority. Or at least it wasn't as much as telling his audience how positively apt he thought the world was. And maybe Dave feels like he's reached the point of his career where punchlines come second to punditry. Or maybe he's just milking the anti-wokers as much as possible before the teat runs dry and they remember that he's a Negro. I really don't know. But my point is, if you want to go to a comedy show for the commentary, then by all means, just don't call that comedy because it's not. Matter of fact, using comedy as a vehicle for commentary, which I feel like a lot of these folks are trying to do, isn't a bad thing either. Like, I literally do it in every one of these videos. But what is a problem is thinking you gassing up your audience's politics gives you a pass for being straight up trash on the stick. So Hannah Gadsby. But Billiam, you're probably saying to the effigy of my profile pic that you've erected in your hallway side closet. None of that answers why conservatives love Carlin so much. Well, actually it does. And the fact that you still don't understand why is proof of my point. But because I love you, have a seat and drink your warm glass of lactate as I spoon feed you like the last five or six minutes worth of subtext that you missed somehow. Carlin, especially in his later life, was very rude, very ornery, and very foul mouth. At times, downright offensive. In other words, the antithesis of woke in the conservative definition, at least. Now, we're not going to dwell on the gentrification and subsequent bastardization and simultaneous commodification of woke because I've done it enough and it's no different than literally all of modern pop culture lexicon. In other words, stolen from black people. In American tradition. But what I am going to dwell on is conservatives embracing of arguably the most anti-conservative comedian not named Hicks or Bruce epitomizing modern conservative ideology. I've said this in the past, but post-Trump conservative politics isn't really about policy so much as it is about messaging. That message being suck on this, you libtard cucks. If you've been comatose since Obama's first term, the GOP's platform has become increasingly less about promoting its own policy than it is just stymieing that of Democrats. Initially, this could have been interpreted as a stalling tactic until they got their guy in the office, which they did. But as you see, the conservative base will all but literally kick themselves in the dick if it means squeezing even one libtard tear from the eyes of the ops. I mean, why else would they ignore their Lord and Savior slashing corporate and estate taxes while creating new deductions and loopholes for only the wealthiest of Americans while taking away many of the deductions that encourage middle class Americans to give to charities like their churches, for example, for no other reason than to assure that both he and his cronies could live as comfortably as possible post POTUS. Jesus, talk about cutting your nose despite the face. My point being, because conservative politicians really have no other card to play but the culture war starter pack, they've just been spamming that like a Hawaiian breakfast for the longest time. Which leads me to this point. Conservatives' contempt for all things PC makes them look dumber than their reps actually are. To the point that they've pretty much done the equivalent of writing a whole book report based on nothing but the blurb on the back. And frankly... Liberals aren't that much better. Hate is a hell of a drug, folks.